Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name's Danielle, and I'm the owner of Dan Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. If you guys are new to my channel, I do want to let you know that all of my links and groups are posted in the description below in case y'all want to check them out. In today's tutorial, we're going to cover everything you see listed here. I know so many of you guys loved the lighted tumbler tutorial that I did a few years ago, but since I was just starting out doing tutorials, I didn't cover as many things as I do now. I always get questions about the extender, what the bottom of the tumbler looks like. So in today's tutorial, I am going to go over every single step this tutorial is going to be a little bit longer than the rest of my tutorials, but I do go over everything. I show y'all guys step by step how I do the bottom, how I attach the battery pack, how I apply the lights to the tumbler. Everything you need to see is covered in this tutorial. If there is something that you need clarification on or have a question, please just ask in the comment section or head over to my tutorial group on Facebook and you can ask there. I will be more than happy to answer them for you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Turn on those notifications so you guys are the first to see new tutorials that drop. But for now, we're going to go ahead and get started on this tutorial and I hope you guys enjoy. Alright y'all, so we are going to start with a steel magnolia tumbler. We are going to remove the bottom cap. The bottom of steel magnolia tumblers, all except for I think one or two, have this bottom cap on it. You can just hammer a very skinny flathead. I am using a metal putty knife. I am just hammering it in between the cap and the tumbler itself. And we're just going to pull it up and the cap pops right off. You can discard this cap. We're not going to use it. This does not affect the integrity of the tumbler at all. These are the fairy lights we're using. I actually love these because they fit right in that larger cavity on the bottom of steel magnolia cups. We are also going to be using an extender mold. I will link everything in the description below. So this is what the extender looks like once you pop it out. It has this little notch where your fairy lights are going to thread through. Now this size was a little bit larger um, than I wanted for this cup. So all I did was heat the extender a little bit. And then I was able to cut a little piece out of the extender and fit it on to the tumbler properly. I have two sizes of these extender molds. I honestly do not remember what size I purchased. I've had these for about three years. Um, but you can just measure the bottom of your tumbler that you're going to be working on and just order the sizes that you need accordingly. So I just cut this in half and I am just cutting a little piece out of it. That way this little ring is a little bit smaller. So this just builds up the base of the cup. That way the fairy light battery compartment is tucked safely away from the bottom of the cup. So our tumbler is still going to sit level. So once you get the extender the size that you want, we are going to attach it to the bottom of the cup. This is about the size that I needed. So I am just going to put a little bit of UV resin and kind of attach these pieces back together. And I'm just going to cure this really quick. And once that is attached to where it's not going to come apart, I am going to put a little bit of UV resin along the edge of the tumbler. We just need a little bit just to hold this extender in place. 
and then we're just going to set the extender on top we're just going to get it as even as we can and then we're going to cure this so once this extender is securely attached to the bottom of our tumbler we're going to unwind our fairy lights make sure that they work first and we're just going to thread the fairy lights through the little notch that is in the extender now when you're unwinding these fairy lights be careful with how you unwind them because we don't want them to get all bent and crooked so this is sped up drastically. This really took a pretty decent amount of time to get them un all unwound. I should have unwound them completely before I started threading them, but I didn't think they would be so tangled. So we're just threading all of this through. Now when you get to the base, part of the wires are going to be covered in a plastic cover. I am taking polymer clay and attaching the fairy lights to the bottom of the tumbler. The polymer clay will hold on that battery pack until you get ready to actually attach the pack with Velcro. So I just wrapped the plastic covered wires around the base of the extender and I'm holding them in place with UV resin. I'm wrapping the plastic part around the base because the plastic wrapped wires are thicker than the other wires and it would take more epoxy to get a smooth surface. So when you're doing your lighted tumblers you will kind of have to have an idea of what you want your finished design to look like. I knew I wanted mine to be a gingerbread house so I just cut out a piece of paper and we're just going to draw the peak of the gingerbread house and we're going to follow this template when I am applying the lights. So again, I am going to use UV resin to hold all of my wires in place. I try to get them as flat as I can. I will also use a silicone tool to hold them in place if I need to. And you guys can see I'm kind of untwisting them just so the wires are laying flush against the tumbler. And I'm really only hitting the UV resin with the UV light for a few seconds because when I apply the next wire and UV resin, the same section is going to continue to get hit with UV light. So in the end, it will still have a few minutes of UV light and everything will be cured as we work around the cup. So we are just following this little drawn out template that I have that I want my gingerbread house to look like. If you guys don't want a gingerbread house and you would rather have just Christmas lights all over your tumbler, then you can just wrap the lights around the cup and then place your bulbs after you have everything epoxied and glittered. So this is basically what I'm going to be doing for the next few seconds. For those of you that like seeing how I do every single step, you can watch this part. If you guys think that you have this down and don't want to watch this step, you can skip ahead a few minutes to when we epoxy. So I'm just going to let this play. This is basically what we're doing. Um, you guys can see right here, I manipulated that wire a little bit. You can see I brought it down a little bit. And this was because when I was lining up the fairy lights, two of the little lights were going to be right on top of each other. So instead of having them right next to each other, I moved the wire down a little bit so that the bulb would be in between the other bulbs and be a little bit more spaced out and look more natural instead of have all the lights kind of clumped together.
And another thing I want to mention is if you don't want to use all of these lights, you can cut the end of the lights off if you don't want as many bulbs on there. So here's another instance where I manipulated that wire so that this bulb would be in between the other two bulbs and not right on top of each other. And in the back of my house, I am going straight across. So it kind of looks like the roof line, I guess, like a straight roof line versus a V. So we are just going to do this until we run out of lights. So when it got to the back of my little gingerbread house, I am just going back and forth in between the roof. So it looks like our roof is just covered with lights. I'm just cutting out the part where I'm holding the light on top of the UV resin. I really am curing it for about 20 seconds each and then moving on to the next one. But we are just going back and forth, back and forth. So it looks like lights going back and forth on a roof. And now we're almost to the end. Now, once we have all of our lights on there, we are going to take this downstairs and I am going to epoxy this three times. This is an important step because we want to get this surface as even as we can no bumps that is how we hide our wires because if we applied glitter directly on top of this surface you would be able to see all the lines it would be very bumpy so we want to try to get a very very flat surface and by applying a few layers of clear epoxy first that is how we're going to achieve that look I like to use Artistry's one-to-one -one fast set. If you guys have not tried them, I do have their link and a discount code down below. Um, I always have a great finish when I use their epoxy, very minimal bubbles. You can use it as a final coat. If you guys want to see the cup right next to this tumbler, I will link it now. This was one of my favorite cups that I've done this year so far. So after we have about three layers of epoxy on our tumbler, I just scuffed it up a little bit. All of our lights are still working and y'all can see that the surface is pretty smooth. So I am going to take Artistry's glitter glue. This is another product from Artistry that I highly recommend. Their glitter glue is 10 times better than Mod Podge. I usually apply my glitter with epoxy or clear spray, but since I have tried glitter glue, I tend to be reaching for this more and more often. If you use a soft brush, you don't get any brush marks. You get great coverage. I never have to do a second coat when I use glitter glue. And I'm just going to sprinkle on some of this brown glitter. This is a new release today 
from my site, The Drunk Flamingo. This one is called Gingerbread. I am going to glitter the bottom rim as well, just to cover up that extender. So I'm going to sprinkle on the glitter, make sure everything is covered really well. And I am leaving the lights on so I can go back in and just wipe a little bit of that glitter off where the lights are. That way the lights will shine a little bit brighter. So I'm going to put this glitter back in there. This one is a little bit lighter than the brown that I already have in stock. I thought it was the perfect color for Ginger Man peekaboo cups and of course gingerbread houses. So right now I'm just going in with a cloth and I'm just kind of wiping away the glitter that is on top of the bulbs themselves just so they shine a little bit brighter. And once I have all of these little bulbs wiped clean, I'm just going to set this to the side, let it dry really well. Um, glitter glue typically takes about 30 minutes to dry. This one was a fairly thick coat, so it will take a little bit longer. It's also a little bit colder in Georgia now, so it may take a little bit longer than normal to dry. But once it is dry, I'm going to spray seal it with Rust-Oleum two times, and then we're going to take it downstairs and epoxy it. I am going to apply two more layers of epoxy. That way all of our glitter is covered. We're going in with the same epoxy I used before, Artistry's one to one Fast Set. I'm just making sure everything is covered. And once our tumbler has two coats of epoxy on it, we will be ready to start the gingerbread part of our tumbler. I originally just wanted to do a gingerbread house just with the drips. I was not ever planning on adding lights or candy or anything that this turned into, but I really do love how it looks. Okay, so now that our cup has been epoxied and sanded, we're ready to decorate it. So I have a bunch of these little candies that I have gotten over the years. These particular ones are from CCDIY. These Christmas trees I think I got off of Etsy. But you can also make your own. So I am going to show you guys how to make some peppermints and candy canes on your own. We are going to start with two equal balls of red and white. And we're just going to smash them a little bit in between my plexiglass pieces. And then we're going to cut them into equal parts. So I'm going to take one of my blades and I'm just going to mark equal parts on our little clay disc before I actually cut it. So now I'm going to cut it in half and then we're going to cut each of these pieces into thirds. So I'm going to mark this at first and show you. So now we have three equal parts. Now we're going to cut those We're going to do the same thing with the other white piece. And then we're going to cut these pieces in halves. So you're going to have 12 tiny little pie slices. 
And then we're going to do the exact same thing to the red disc. So I'm going to speed this up just a little bit because y'all saw how I cut the white one. We're just doing the same exact thing to the red piece. And once we have all of these little pieces cut, we are going to piece them back together. And you will have enough to make two peppermints. So we're just going to alternate colors. We're going to start with white, then red, then white, then red. And we're just going to build this up until we have a circle again. And this is going to be our peppermint cane. This is what a clay cane is. So we're just going to reduce this down. We're going to make it small. We're going to roll it out because we want these peppermints to be a little bit smaller. So we're just reducing, reducing, rolling, reducing. So then we have this little peppermint cane that we're going to set aside for now. We're going to put everything in the refrigerator before we cut it just so it's a little bit more stiff and we'll hold it shape a little bit better when we go to cut our peppermints. So now that that one is set to the side, we are going to make some candy canes some little candy canes, and then we're going to make some little twist like you guys already see in front of me, but we're going to do some red and white ones. So we're just rolling out some red clay and some white clay. And once you roll it out a good bit, we are just going to take these two colors and we're just going to twist them together. This is sped up a little bit, so you do want to twist it carefully. And once you have it twisted, we're just going to roll it so we get smooth edges. And then just like the cane, we are going to set this aside, put it in the refrigerator. I put these in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. So they are a little bit stiff. And now we're just going to cut them in pieces with our feather blade. So now we have the start of peppermints. If you guys are happy with how your pattern looks right here. You can definitely stop here if you want to, but we are going to take it one step further and give our candy canes, or sorry, our peppermints, that little swirl that you would see in candies sometimes. So we are going to start with a small piece of white clay And we're going to take one peppermint disc and another one, and we're going to sandwich the two pieces of clay together. This little white piece was a little larger than I needed. You just want the little white piece to give the peppermint a little bit of volume. And we're going to try our best to match up the white and red pieces on each peppermint. Then we're going to roll this into a ball, almost like a bead. 
Then we're going to take our plexiglass and kind of roll it and flatten it at the same time. The more you roll, the better the swirl will be. So I will show you with another one. We're just taking a small piece of white clay. We are sandwiching it between two peppermint discs, matching up the red and white ends, rolling it into a ball. And then we're going to take our plexiglass and we're just going to roll it and then flatten it. And there's our little peppermint. So you can do that with as many of these little peppermint discs as you want. So now for our little candy cane twist, we are just going to cut off some sizes and we're just going to form them into candy canes and put them on our baking sheet. And then I also just wanted some peppermint twist. So I'm just cutting some of these down to size. And I knew I wanted some peppermint, like a little peppermint twist over my door. I thought that would be super cute. So I just made a little curve that I was going to add over the door of my gingerbread house. Then I'm just making some little candy canes. I didn't really know what I wanted to use. So I was just making different shapes. Whatever I don't use for this gingerbread house, I can use for something else that I make. Now, once you get all of your little pieces made and shaped how you want them, we are going to put them in the oven. Always read the back of your clay for instructions. I like to bake my clay around 265, 270 for about an hour. Um, the longer that you bake polymer clay, the better the flexibility will be, the more time the polymers will have to kind of bake together. The only way that your clay will burn is if your oven spikes and gets hotter than, you know, 300 degrees for an extended period of time. I do suggest having a thermometer that you can easily read versus just the digital one on the oven just to make sure that the temperature is correct and you're not going to have any spikes. But once your clay is baked, it should still be pretty flexible, which is what I will show you guys. So all of my pieces are baked now. Like I mentioned, my clay will have good flexibility because I do bake it for about an hour. So it gives those polymers a good chance to bond together. So you can see that my clay is still flexible, which is good. So if it drops, it's not going to crack in half. All right, guys. So now that we have all of our little candy pieces and our peppermint pieces are made, if you would rather just make your own, it is time to start adding the icing and attaching our candy pieces. I am just using Artistry's one-to-one -one facet again. I typically use this for all of my epoxy projects. I know a lot of you guys struggle to use a facet for drips. So hopefully by me using this a lot, it will help you guys kind of see how I use it and how you can be successful with facet drips as well. I am just mixing my two parts together and then we're going to color it with white snow dispersion color from CCDIY, as well as my mother of pearl white mica from thedrunkflamingo.com. When you do drips with facet versus regular epoxy, it is a little bit of a learning curve. With regular epoxy, I make sure it is super, super thick, almost not even moving, like a very thick molasses but with fast set, it's a little bit different because it's still going to be moving. Once your fast set starts to heat up, you have minimal working time with it. So you do have to work fairly quickly. A lot of you guys have mentioned how your fast set flash cures. A lot of you guys mentioned how your fast set will flash cure on you. To avoid that, you're going to want to stir your epoxy every one or two minutes just to break up that concentrated heat so it does not flash cure on you. So while our epoxy is thickening, I am just taping off my 
roof line for my gingerbread house. I am going to start my drips right beneath my lights. I don't want to cover them with my epoxy drips. I do have one little rogue light at the bottom, but we're just going to cover that one with a little drip so he's not going to be some random floating light. So my epoxy is pretty much ready to apply. You guys can see that the fast set is still moving. We are just going to start with a very small amount and we're just going to spread it right along that tape line. And we're just doing a very, very thin layer. Now, once you get that epoxy on your cup, it will start to cure pretty quickly and set up. That's just how fast set works versus regular epoxy. So we're just spreading this right along the roof line. And then just like regular drips on a tumbler, I'm just going to look at all of the drips and wherever drips are naturally starting to form, I'm just adding small little beads of epoxy and helping those drips kind of drip down the tumbler a little, little bit more. And a tip, if you need your drips to drip a little bit further down the tumbler, you can always hit it with your torch just a little bit. I always hit my drips with my torch anyway, just to pop any bubbles. I don't want any weird little holes in the drips on my cup. So once you're happy with how your drips are looking, we are going to go ahead and peel that tape off. And then you guys can see the roof line starting to form. I did have a little bit of stringy epoxy. This little piece started to cure on me a little bit quicker, but it's nothing that I couldn't fix. All right, guys, so now that our drips are on there, I did not wait for these drips to cure completely. I just mixed up another batch of Fast Set. I waited for it to get pretty thick and then I started just attaching these little candy pieces. So I am just spreading a thin layer of epoxy on the cup and then I am kind of draping some epoxy over top of the candy just to kind of look like icing is dripping and then we're just attaching the candy to the cup. So I did this all around the roof line. So this is what it looks like. So now we have our roof line kind of mapped out and then we can start filling in the blank space. So I'm going to pause this here for a second and say that the next time I do a tumbler like this, I will do it a little bit differently. So instead of adding drips on the tumbler, which is what I did, I would actually go ahead and glitter this part white or either glitter it white before I did this step, um, map it out, do a white roof and then a brown body because I ended up not liking the drips that I put on there and changed the whole thing. So I will just kind of show y'all what I did originally, which is just adding drips on the tumbler. I was just trying to kind of connect the lights, but I ended up not liking it. So I just kind of cut this part out of the video. <laughs> So this is what it looked like after all of the drips and candy were on there, um, which I ended up changing, but I just attached the rest of the candy to the roof with epoxy, just like I did the roof line. So now we're just going to go ahead and add the door. I just kind of drew out where I wanted my door to go. I kind of had a vision of what I wanted my doors and windows to look like. I am just using blush pop of color paint. This is a chalk paint. It does dry pretty quickly, which is why I chose to use this paint versus a regular acrylic. 
And I'm just making sure that our little candy cane decor is going to fit right above that door line. And then I'm going to decide where I want my windows. So I'm just going to draw them out with a white paint pen. And then I will go back and actually fill it in with white paint. I know I'm a little out of frame, I'm sorry. But we're just painting the door right now. If you guys don't feel confident in your painting abilities, you can definitely just cut your doors or your windows out of vinyl, printable vinyl. Um, I'm sure you can get stickers or something like that. I just wanted to paint them on. It was the quickest option for me. And this is a fairly simple thing to do. And with this paint, I typically do two or three layers, especially since we're painting on a dark background. So I'm just going to let this dry, we'll come back and do another layer, and then we're going to add some details. So now that our paint is all dry, I am just going to kind of outline the windows and doors. We're just going to add some details. And this is a very kind of playful, cartoony feeling cup. So I wasn't, I didn't want it to be perfect. That was not the look that I was going for. It reminds me of something that would come out of Whoville. So <laughs> that was kind of the look that I was going for. So now that we have our little details for the windows and doors, I'm just adding a little window here. And then I also wanted to add some holly. I thought it would be cute to kind of have some holly around the peppermint above the door. And then some holly actually around the door itself. So we're doing the holly the same way we did in the holly cup that I just posted. We're just drawing some little holly leaves then we'll go back and add some berries and then we will go back with our black paint pen and kind of outline and detail everything my paint pens of choice are the posca brand they are the best that i've used i really like them because they are a felt tip they're not plastic. So this holly is going to be where our peppermint goes. Just kind of like a wreath above the door. And before you start adding your berries, you do want to make sure that the green is dry. Because you don't want your colors to kind of blend together. And then I just added some little holly details above the windows. I 
and you guys can see how ridiculous the back of that cup looks now. <laughs> So now we're just outlining everything. And with my paint pens, I have never had to seal my paint pens before. So I will just epoxy right on top of this. No need to seal. Sometimes the white, you may need to go back over it a little bit. So I decided to add a couple more little holly leaves. They weren't quite as large as I wanted them. I wanted a little bit more of that green to show around the peppermint. So I just added two more larger holly leaves. And once that dries, I decided to add a little bit of snow on the bottom of the tumbler. Kind of looking like the gingerbread house was sitting in snow so I'm just going in with pop of color white. Again, I do like to use pop of color for some things because it does dry very quickly. If you need to do a second coat, you do have to make sure that the first coat is completely dry. If not, the first coat will start to come off, if that makes sense. <laughs> So once it is completely dry, you can go back and add your second coat. I am covering the bottom of the cup. I just wanted it white like the rest of the bottom. And then I decided to kind of outline the snow. This is a aqua Posca marker. And again, since we are going for that playful vibe, I wanted a little pop of blue. So I have the blue and then I'm also going to go back over this with a black just so the aqua or the blue is just barely noticeable, but it's still there. So I'm just adding some little accent lines. And now I'm going to go back in with my black Posca marker and just kind of go over those blue lines, but not totally over them. So that way we get a little bit more of that black definition, but we still see that aqua blue underneath.
So I was pretty happy with how this was looking. Again, just kind of that cartoony vibe. So now that my paint pens should all be dry, I'm going to go back and attach the peppermint little wreath and then the candy cane over the doorway. So I am just going to attach these with E6000. I like this glue because it is a tacky glue. So once you put the adhesive on there, let it sit for just a few seconds, it gets tacky. You can attach it to your tumbler and it stays firm. It does have an odor. I know it smells pretty awful, but if you just use a little bit at a time, it's not so bad. So I just let these sit for a couple minutes, set up, and then attach them to my cup. And we really don't need a whole lot um, since this is just attaching it, everything will be epoxied and then have a really good bond. So I decided that I wanted to add some drips to my windows. I'm just going with tulip paint Sometimes I use this for little small projects, but I typically like epoxy for my drips. So we're just applying a little bit to the windows and then we're just banging the cup on this cloth just to help those drips kind of drip down the cup. So you can see that they are dripping. I'm just taking my little silicone tool, wiping right along that edge just to give it a sharp line. So now it just looks like snow is dripping off of the windows. And then we have these cute little Christmas trees. I'm going to attach those as well. If I can find these Christmas tree cookies, I will link them, but I have had them for years. I think that they were actually a free gift with something that I ordered, honestly but I'm sure you can find similar things on Amazon or Etsy. But again, I am just using E6000 and we are just going to attach those to the side of my cup. I thought they would be cute kind of around the door. So after that adhesive gets tacky, we are just going to place those on the cup. So after everything dries and cures, we are going to go ahead and put a layer of epoxy on our tumbler. I still really wasn't sure what I was going to do for the roof of my cup. I was not happy with how the drips looked on the back side of the cup but at this point I was like let me just get some epoxy on and then I'll decide what I want to do with it. So to epoxy tumblers like this I typically use a paintbrush. That way the paintbrush can kind of get in all of those little cracks and crevices without having too much epoxy so it won't pull and all of these little sections so that all of our little 3D elements are just covered. They are not dripping with epoxy, they are just covered with it to get a good layer. And I just do this all the way around the cup. I just pause my turner, work in one section, turn it on just enough to move to the next section and then basically paint it with epoxy as well. And then even after I get all of my epoxy on, I will still look at the entire cup 
and if there are any pools of epoxy I will go back with my paintbrush and kind of dig them out dig the epoxy out of the little crevices things like that now sometimes it's unavoidable that you may get a little bit of epoxy gathered somewhere but that's just kind of the nature of 3d cups I try my best not to have that happen but sometimes it's unavoidable because epoxy has a mind of its own once it's on a cup. So once we have our epoxy on, I'll hit this with my torch. I will clean my brush off with acetone. And then we are going to fix the roof of my house. So I decided to take glitter glue and some white mica. So it was not quite opaque, but it did have a little bit of a white finish. And I am just painting over everything <laughs> and sprinkling um, classic martini glitter on top. And I did this two times to get good coverage. I'm just using my tea strainer to sprinkle the glitter on. And then I'm going back with my little silicone tool and I am removing the glitter from the lights. So if I would have known that I wanted my roof of my house to be white, I would have painted this beforehand. I would not have added the drips, but we all live and learn of what looks good and what may need improvement luckily i was able to save this one and i think it turned out super cute still but again i did this twice to get good glitter coverage and so that brown was covered up and the drips weren't as noticeable and then i went in with some more candy and just added that to the roof as well and then i decided to add some drips to the roof because this cup was already like over the top crazy so I figured why not add more drips so again we just let artistry's one-to-one -one ratio fast set thicken up a little bit and I am just applying this to the top edge I am kind of applying it like a a-frame house where the front of the cup only has a little bit of drips and then we're making the back drips longer just to cover some of that blank space and then I went in and filled even more of the blank space with some more candy because why not and I just attached the candy with epoxy again just like I did before so I am just adding a little bit more epoxy to help it drip down the back and I was applying it in spaces where there were no lights so that the lights would not be covered. And once this cures, I will epoxy it again. Make sure everything is good and covered. And then it will be time to work on the bottom. So since this bottom was going to be open, I didn't want it just to be gray and stainless so of course I had to add some glitter we're just mixing up some epoxy and I'm going to use two glitter colors arctic mule cocktail and sparkling sage I am just removing the polymer clay right now I am just gently setting this battery pack to the side And we're just going to mix up a little bit of this epoxy. And I'm not going to fill these cavities all the way. I am just going to add enough to add a little bit of sparkle to the bottom of the cup. Typically, this exterior cavity only takes about five mils of epoxy. You do have to be very careful around the wire part. I don't want to drip this epoxy on the battery pack or the wires, but there is enough room since the extender is sitting on top of that rim. 
there's plenty of room to add some glitter even though it may not look like it in this video there is plenty of room for you to work with And then once we fill that exterior cavity, we're going to go back with Sparkling Sage, which is one of my favorite kind of white champagne colors. And we're just going to drop a little bit of this in the center cavity. Again, I am not filling this all the way like I would a normal glitter butt tumbler. We're just adding enough to have a thin layer of glitter on the bottom. I still want that battery pack to fit right in between that cavity. So we're just adding enough epoxy to just coat that bottom. So once the bottom epoxy has cured, we're going to attach our battery pack with Velcro. I am just cutting a small piece of Velcro off of this pack. If you would rather get the little circle Velcro pieces, you can do that. I just had this on hand and it worked perfectly fine. So I'm just attaching both pieces of Velcro together. And I'm going to clean the back of my battery pack really well. Since this had polymer clay stuck to it for a few days, I'm just going to wipe it with some alcohol, clean it off really well. And then I'm going to peel off the backing of one of the Velcro pieces, make sure it fits in there okay. And then we're going to remove the backing off the other piece. and then just set it down on the base of the tumbler. And now it's all stuck on there. So now if you want to change the batteries or clean something, you can just remove that battery pack, change the batteries, put it back on there. Everything works good. And once you get that battery pack attached, you can turn on the lights if you want to, turn them off, but everything will be finished. So I hope this tutorial was a little bit more detailed for those of you that watched my um, original lighted tumbler tutorial that I did a few years back. I hope I answered some of your questions when it came to the extender, how the battery pack attached to the bottom. Yes, the battery pack is open to the bottom, so you do have to be careful if you're going to wash it. Um, the one that I have from a few years ago still works perfectly fine. But here are some finished pictures of the tumbler. I absolutely love how it turned out. I think it's super cute. Perfect candy gingerbread house for Christmas. And if you guys try this tutorial, please post in the group. I love to see what you guys come up with um, after watching my tutorials. And that is pretty much it, you guys. I hope y'all enjoyed this tutorial. If y'all enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group or my mentorship group. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching!